Hello, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Uh, welcome to this episode of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. Uh, this is Wednesday. We call it Wisdom Wednesday because for quite a long time now, every Wednesday, we've been studying the book of Proverbs. And now we're all the way up to the in the middle of the 18th chapter. So we're going to pick up where we left off last time with uh, chapter 18, verse 17. If you have not seen the previous episodes, uh, they are uploaded on my YouTube channel, Sin City Preacher. Uh, I hope you will go back and watch those. Uh, first, let me ask uh, Brother Eric, who's with me now, to, to say hi to everybody before we get started. Hello, everybody. It's me again, the homo. D-E-H-A-L-L-M-O, coming to you from my office. Back to you, Brother Luke. All right. Thank you, brother. Um, I, I've uh, said this so many times, but I think it's necessary to keep repeating it. Uh, I'm what uh, Brother Joe Byron coined as a King James firstist. Um, I like to read the King James Version first, uh, but then I, also, uh, I find that very often, particularly as we've been studying the book of Proverbs and also uh, the book of Job recently, they, I'm finding that uh, the King James translation has been difficult for me sometimes. I find it helpful to look at a, another other translations, uh, and the one that I've been using is the Amplified. So I'll be going back and forth from the King James to the Amplified as we study this. Now, starting with ch ch uh, where we left off last time, chapter 18, it'll be verse 17. It says, uh, He that is first in his own cause seemeth just, but his neighbor cometh and searcheth him. <laughs> all right. Uh, it did not take me long at all to get stumped. <laughs> okay, brother, I'll give you a first chance at explaining that. Uh, to me, um, there are certain verses in Proverbs that kind of stand alone. One verse is expressing an idea. And, and uh, the verses before and the verses after it are not necessarily connected. I think this might be the case uh, with this verse here. Um, but uh, do you have any reaction to that verse before I go to the Amplified? Uh, I'm familiar with that verse. And that verse carries with it a doctrine. And uh, if you look at that verse, he that is first in his own cause, Okay, whenever somebody comes up with a new doctrine, for example, and uh, it sounds good to them and uh, everything, uh, usually the truth of that doctrine isn't exposed until it's been uh, examined by someone else, which would be the second part of that verse. But his neighbor cometh and searcheth him. And uh, then in that instance, then uh, that doctrine will be true, proven true or correct. That's why it's so important to have uh, uh, trusted counselors uh, like I do. Okay, back to you, Brother Luke. Okay, uh, if your interpretation is correct here, then it would relate to the Apostle Paul and the town of Berea, what happened there. Um, and I think this is worth mentioning. Uh, I've talked about it many times in the past, but the Apostle Paul was going from town to town telling people the good news about Jesus that this promised Messiah had come and in fact was Jesus Christ and 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 uh, the, uh, the town before Berea they rejected it entirely but the town of Berea they listened to Paul and they heard and they they accepted it they believed but after Paul left they went and double checked they went into the scriptures to confirm for themselves to see if it was so because Paul was saying that uh, you know, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. <laughs> it was buried, it was raised from the dead according to the scriptures. So, uh, you know, they should be able to find this in the scriptures. And uh, sure enough, they did. So if you double check when someone's teaching you something or you read something in a book or something, uh, you need to uh, double check and go right to the scriptures and study it out and see if it truly is in there and if it truly does say that. And so it requires some effort on our part, some diligence. And when we are diligent in that way, 
and we go to the scriptures to, to check it out for ourselves that that is called being Berean because of the people who lived in that town Berea um, all right I'm gonna look at it in the Amplified and see if that uh, how that phrases it okay sir 17 says the first one to plead his case seems right until another comes and cross examines him okay uh, I think that uh, that's another way of uh, saying it a little more it's more clear to me obviously in the amplified and I don't see any contradiction with with the way you interpret it brother um, when you when you listen to someone, for, for example, right now, if you're watching this live, you're listening to me talk about the scriptures and doctrines and the book of Proverbs. And, and uh, so I'm the first one to plead my case on this. I'm the first one to tell you you're listening now, but you should always be willing to listen to somebody else. And uh, I should be willing to be cross-examined. Uh, matter of fact, that's what Brother Eric and I are doing as, as we go along. We're cross-examining each other. If, uh, if I say something that doesn't seem right, then uh, Brother Eric, uh, he has a duty to the scriptures and, and to me to, to challenge it, to cross-examine me. And uh, so we can try to work it out. And if I'm wrong, I want to be corrected. Uh, all right, brother, uh, I'm going to, anything before we go on to the next verse? Uh, once again, we're in absolute agreement, Brother Luke. And... I see this as a very important doctrine. We need to give it a name and we need to put it on the list of important doctrines because uh, we're losing too many souls because of uh, people not following this all important doctrine. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I think that the, there has been a name given to it. As I said earlier, the idea of checking people out and going to the scriptures for yourself instead of just accepting everything that everybody teaches you um, blindly uh, the idea of going to the scriptures and seeing if it's so that that is the term is you're being berean so that's a, that's the proper term to use to uh, identify this doctrine i'm going to go to the next verse uh 18 look at it in the kjv first takes me a second to scroll back and forth between the two of them okay 18 chapter 18 verse 18 the lot causeth contentions to cease and parteth between the mighty <laughs> okay again i think that what we've got here is a series of verses that stand alone <clears throat> they're not necessarily connected one to the uh, one to the other sometimes you have two or three or four verses. Sometimes uh, much of the entire chapter is is expressing one concept, one point, <clears throat> and the verses all are flow together. In this case, though, this is a different idea than we just had in verse 17. And it says, The lot causeth contentions to cease and parteth between the mighty. <clears throat> I think I understand the first part. The second, I'm not so sure, but uh, let me ask you to, Explain that to me if you can, brother. Uh, I agree with you, brother Luke. Uh, I call them one-trick ponies. We're, we're in the land of one-trick ponies. <laughs> now let me tell you something else. These are small but powerful. So they're a lot like dynamite, too. And they should be heated. Okay, now uh, I agree with you on the first half, but I haven't done figured out the second half back to you all, all right uh, so um, uh, the first half I w hadn't really taken a position on it it seems like I it, it's pretty basic the lot that means casting lots I believe uh, causes contentions to cease see it reminds me of uh, after Judas hanged himself and uh you know jesus there was a jesus had this resurrection and then he was with the apostles for 40 days and then he ascended into heaven 
the apostles were left behind to to uh, start and, and build the church. Uh, and for some reason, uh, they thought that there should be 12 instead of 11. One former apostle, Jesus was, was uh, I mean, uh, Judas was dead. Um, I don't see any script, anything in the scriptures that, that says that there had to be a replacement. Uh, but uh, the apostles seemed to believe there needed to be a replacement. And they chose uh, drawing lots as the as the method to determine it. I think it was between uh, uh, Matthias. I can't remember the other person uh, who uh, who was considered. It was down to two people, and the apostles drew lots, and that's how they decided it. I'm not so sure that in that case, though, this was the will of God to uh, replace. Uh, Judas with Matthias. We don't see anything else about Matthias uh, after that point when he was selected. There's no more mentioning of him in the scriptures. Um, maybe he went on to become a great apostle, and we, we but there's not a, a record of that. Uh, but I suspect that maybe they should have been just waited for the God to, to deliver them another apostle because we know that later it took it took several years, but uh, later on. Uh, uh, God chose a Saul of Tarsus, who was persecuting the church. And, and uh, on the road to Damascus, Jesus appeared to Saul of Tarsus, and he was converted uh, into an, a, a believer, an, uh, an apostle, and, and uh, it, it, his name was changed to Paul, from Saul to Paul, and that and he is known as the Apostle Paul. So God uh, replaced, I think God replaced Judas in, at that time. I may be wrong on that, but it, it, it seems to fit for me. But the concept of choosing lots to settle something uh, was, was not uncommon. Uh, the soldiers at the crucifixion of uh, Jesus were drawing lots, or doing some sort of gambling. Some people say they were rolling dice, but they did something to, to gamble to uh, see who would get the clothing that Jesus uh, had. I think he had at least a robe that was probably valuable that they wanted. Uh, so it says the lot causes contentions to cease. So if there's an argument and you can't decide it, you can draw lots and, or you can play paper, rock, scissors. It's just a way of, of making a decision, you know? Uh, now the second half of it, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm gonna go to the amplified, but before I do, I, let me get your reaction to that part of it. Uh, yeah, I agree with you, Brother Luke, and uh, I think that the church did the right thing by uh, uh, erring on the side of scriptures, uh, because I do believe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that casting lots is uh, scriptural, uh, according to the Old Testament law. And so they were uh, abiding by the uh, correct procedures, and uh, then again, uh, we must consider uh, what you were talking about, waiting on the Lord for uh, advice and counsel. Now, uh, that's very important to do, too. So, uh, one, sometimes uh, when we have a number of items, uh, there may be a few extra items just in case, uh, like God did with the tribes of Israel. Uh, not many people know that there's actually 14 tribes instead of 12. And uh, there's a purpose and a reason that God did that. Okay, back to you, Brother Luke. Okay, thank you. That, that's very interesting. I, I'm not familiar with the two extra tribes, so uh, maybe someday you can share that with me. I'd like to hear about it. Uh, the idea of 12, um, I think that uh, um, 12 is a significant number. We have the 12 tribes of Israel, that, and, and if there were two more that are not commonly recognized that may be the case but we, we are familiar with the term the 12 tribes of Israel uh, it even says in the book of James this was written to the 12 tribes scattered abroad uh, but the uh, the number 12 well, that represents the 12 sons of uh, Jacob who was also also called Israel he had the 12 sons and from their descendants were these 12 tribes and uh, now, there are two others. I mean, Joseph had two sons. I think it was 
Ephraim or, and Manasseh. Or I, I'm not positive about that, but he had two sons. Maybe that's uh, that's how you come up with a, a, another two. Uh, but nevertheless, the number 12 is a significant number, and I don't think it's a coincidence that there's 12 tribes and, yet, and there's also 12 apostles. Now, I do believe that uh, there were actually many more apostles. I mean, some people today on YouTube call themselves apostle this or apostle that. And uh, I, I think that's quite uh, uh, arrogant and presumptuous to take that as a title. Even though the word apostle means someone who sent, literally. So you could say that uh, you're an apostle if you go on some kind of a mission. Um, but but as we think of apostles in terms of these were the eyewitnesses to Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. That was a criteria to be deemed a, uh, an apostle. And uh, that's why Paul qualified, because Jesus appeared to him after the on the road to Damascus. Uh, but there were others that were considered apostles. Uh, I think besides Matthias, that was the replacement, you also have Barnabas and Saul, and, and I think maybe Apollos might have been considered an apostle. So I don't think that the apostles were limited to 12. There are some religions today, like the, the, the Mormons, who believe that these concept of 12 apostles should continue. And they think that they've got, you know, they're the continuation. They have 12 apostles in their, in their cult. Um, I'm going to look at the next uh, second half in the Amplified, uh, and then we'll discuss that, because I don't have any idea what that's referring to. Amplify. Okay, chapter 18, verse 18, part B. Uh, it says, I'll read the whole thing in the Amplified. To cast lots puts an end to quarrels and decides between powerful contenders. Yeah. That's, I mean, what can, what else should we say about that? Except we've given some examples of how this, this method was used uh, in the scriptures. Anything else on that before we go to the next verse, brother? Uh, I just like to agree with you, brother Luke. I think the Amplified Version did a good job uh, in this instance of translating that second half. Back to you. Okay, thank you. I'll, I'll move on now to the next verse, and we'll go back to the KJV to read it first. Okay, verse 19, a brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. <laughs> and their contentions are like the bars of a castle. Wow. Well, I don't know. I think I've been on both sides of that issue. I know that I've offended people. Uh, there's there's numerous people I know uh, in the church here, uh, locally here in Las Vegas, uh, and then also uh, on the internet uh, that are our brothers and even sisters that uh, have been offended by me, and uh, some of them remain offended. There have been a couple who were offended, and yet uh, and then we've reconciled, and I'm thankful for that. Uh, and I can say I'm on the other side of that question, too, is that uh, um, I've certainly been offended by a lot of the brethren. Uh, but um, once someone told me once, a street preacher I know, he said to me something that really kind of stuck, really stuck with me. And I don't know if it, this this can be found in the scriptures, this these this as a verse or as a, as a premise, but he said, Luke, a dead man cannot be offended. So, um, you know, it, that I, I think if I am offended, or, or if you're watching now, you get offended by the brethren, uh, it certainly is an indication that we haven't died our old self, our old nature, you know, we haven't died completely. Um, so, uh, uh, brother, okay, a brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city, and their contentions are like the bars of a castle. What is your reaction to that, brother? 
uh, Brother Link, I really, really, really love this verse. I think about it often because uh, the truth is so profound, so much so that I have been known to go around and offend people intentionally in order to reconcile with them <laughs> so that I could puff my chest up and say, look at me, I just defeated a strong city. <laughs> well, uh, thank you. I, you know, the, 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 the Bible is full of the most serious subject matter. And uh, when we can, when you, I'm, I'm not very good at it myself, but when you or Brother Bill particularly interject humor, uh, it's just, it's very, just very refreshing. And I, I, I much, much appreciated. Sometimes I think I really need to lighten up. Uh, and uh, so I thank you for that. Uh, I'm going to read the whole thing in the Amplified now. Verse um, 19, a brother offended is harder to win over than a fortified city. And contentions separating families are like the bars of a castle. Wow, that sure makes it very, very clear. First of all, a brother offended is harder to win over than a fortified city. That, that's how hard it is to sometimes to reconcile. It really is a shame. Uh, that uh, this reconciliation, I mean, look, uh, I'm reminded of the uh, the fact that uh, J Jesus taught us about forgiveness. I mean, the, the most powerful example of all is as he's dying on the cross, he, he looks at the people who just crucified him and says, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. I mean, I, I can you imagine? I know that there have been other, there have been saints throughout history who have been burned at the stake, and and followed Jesus's example and and, and uh, forgiven their their murderers and persecutors. Uh, it's a it's a powerful thing, and I, I'm not sure if I would, I could be I'm good enough to do that. But uh, the idea of forgiving each other and just reconciling um, is. Uh, is one of the most important concepts in Christianity. Um, that Jesus had a, a, a story. I think it was a parable. I don't. He didn't mention anybody's names. He talked about a person that was uh, forgiven a debt, and then he found a person that owed him much, much less, and. They couldn't pay him, and he wouldn't forgive the debt. He had them put in prison. And uh, when the rich man that had forgiven the original, the first man, his debt, his large debt, found out about it, and then he ended up getting back at the the, the, the man that he forgave. And not, in other words, this, this person was forgiven so much. And, I, and and if you look at this personally for a moment. <laughs> I've been forgiven so much, a lifetime of sin. From the time I was a little infant and first uh, first was able to make uh, decisions and uh, my actions, and, and uh, you know, I, I like everyone else, we freely chose to to misbehave, and and uh, you know, it, it's been a lifetime of that. And and as we grow and mature, you know. We, we, we don't want to, but we still struggle with it. Even the Apostle Paul talked about his struggles in the book of Romans, how he wanted to do the right thing, and he in, instead he did the wrong thing. And he didn't want to do the wrong thing, and, and yet he did it. And uh, he said, oh, wretched man that I am. And yet it, he says, it's not me, but it's the sin that lives in me. It's our sinful nature. So we have a lifetime of sin. We even have a genetic code in us that says sinner, sinner. That's what you are. And so 
Uh, and yet, with all that, the Bible says, God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Um, scriptures say that some people, peradventure, might be willing to die for a good man. But how many people would be willing to die for a, a bad person? And aren't we all bad in the sight of God? Uh, relatively, some are worse than others, but we are all wretches. We, are, we all fall short. And no one is righteous, not even one. And yet, knowing that, Jesus was willing to, to die for us. Uh, so we've been forgiven so much. And yet it seems to be so hard for us to forgive each other and reconcile. And that's why it's talking to hear about how it's like, how is it phrased here in the, uh, it says, a brother offended is hard, harder to win over than a fortified city. And I know you're joking about, you know, offending people and reconciling on purpose because then it's like you're defeating a fortified city. Uh, you know, it's, but, but this should teach us that how, how rare it is, how hard it is for people to forgive each other and reconcile. And then it says, and contentions separating families are like the bars of a castle. Contentions are like bars that keep us apart. It's, it's sad. It's, it's sad. And, and it seems like the church should be better than the rest of the world. Yeah, but brother, I've got bad news to report to you. I've had more problems dealing with Christians than I ever had dealing with heathens. They seem to be, we're, we're not any better, unfortunately. Brother, uh, what's your response to that before we go on? Uh, I agree with you, brother Luke. Uh, there's a lot to be considered here. Uh, we could really hash this out for years, uh, but uh, we must move on. Okay, back to you. Okay, I'll go back. Go back to the next verse, first in the KJV. And we are on now verse... Uh, 20, a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Well, that's like me trying to understand Latin. Um, sorry, I need some help with that one. I'm going to go to the Amplified, but I want to give you a chance to, uh, to uh, explain that to me if you can. Uh, that's very profound, Brother Luke. Uh, it's not talking about uh, the belly that is filled with meat. It's talking about the spiritual belly. And that belly is satisfied by words. And what words you put in that belly is very important. Very important to dine on the flesh of Jesus Christ and to drink his blood. To do that is to believe his words and to receive his salvation. Okay, back to you, Brother Luke. Well, as I was listening to you, the thought that came to my mind is the scripture that says, uh, uh, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word proceeds from the mouth of God. So the, the, the words of God are here, and we need to live, live by this food. This is spiritual food. And so, yeah, I, I don't, this is definitely, it's not talking about the fruit of being, being an, uh, an apple or a pear or a peach. It's talking about the, the words, where are good words or bad words is, would be, uh, but, uh, uh, so, I'm going to read it in the Amplify and see how it expresses it. A man's stomach will be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. Now, the fruit of his mouth um, is, um, 
uh, to me, the fruit of his mouth is what comes out of your mouth. It's not what goes into your mouth. So it, it's, it's odd to me that it's referring to our stomach. First of all, the words do not satisfy our stomach or that kind of a hunger. Um, I agree that this has to be spiritualized and the, the, um, the appetite, man's appetite and needs uh, spiritually. Uh, but it says, be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. He will be satisfied with the consequence of his words. Uh, I'm still not really sure about the meaning of that verse there, brother. I, I listen to you and I look at the Amplify, but uh, I'm really sh not quite sure. Uh, I'll move on to the next one, but anything else you want to add to that? Uh, well, I would just like to add to the second half. If you look at it this way, Jesus said, He that believes on me out of his belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Now, those rivers of living waters flow out of your belly through your mouth. Okay, back to you, Brother Luke. Yeah. Okay, that, that, that helps. Because even if it's your belly, what comes out of your mouth is the words. The words, uh, the living waters, the, the righteous words that we have to say, particularly when we share the gospel. Okay, so I'll go on now to the uh, KJV, the next verse. And it says, uh, verse 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. <laughs> I'll read it again. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Um, when it says, and they that love it, uh, it's referring back to this first part, death and life are in the power of the tongue. I'm not sure what the it is referring back to. Is it death and life, or is it the power of the tongue? Again, I'm, I'm quite confused by this, so help me if you can. Well, Brother Luke, uh, that seems to be, uh, for a change, it seems to be uh, connected to the previous verse. Because uh, from the it, all that comes from the belly or the heart. Maybe the heart and the belly could be uh, considered the same piece of spiritual anatomy. I don't know. Uh, what do you think about that? But on uh, as far as uh, loving it, uh, yeah, I would say that uh, people who possess that uh, talent, natural ability, uh, do love having that talent, uh, and it's it's very profitable. Uh, we know all about those silver tongue devils that are preaching the false gospel and how profitable it's been for them, but that's uh, not in a good way at all. Uh, if they remain true to the gospel their silver tongues would have benefited us. Okay, back to you, Brother Luke. Okay, um, I, I do think you are right that the two verses are related. So let me look at it again. Uh, I'll read them together, verse 20 and 21 in the Amplified. A man's stomach will be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and he will be satisfied with the consequence of his words. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it and indulge it will eat its fruit and bear the consequences of their words. Uh, I think that I, if I was going to like simplify the whole thing, I mean, I, it's hard for me to break it down and really analyze word for word what it means but but overall i think the concept is look there's power in our word we have the power to destroy people with our words or we have the power to uplift people and, and build them up and help them and uh, bless them with our words so we need to recognize i, I know that throughout proverbs many times uh, it, it's only mentioned i think once or twice uh, prior to this in prior chapters but it talks about the tongue the tongue being a powerful uh, member, or maybe that's uh, 
Paul wrote that. I can't remember, but what we say with our tongue, there's tremendous power. And it says death and life are in the power of the tongue. So be very, very careful what you say. Um, okay, I'll go on to the, uh, the next verse, the KJV. Uh, verse 22, whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor of the Lord. Yeah, that's that verse stands alone. It's not related to the verse 21 or verse 23. So it says, whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor of the Lord. Now, this is very interesting because uh, there's many times we find in the book of Proverbs where Paul I mean, uh, Solomon is saying the exact opposite. And if you have a bad wife, I mean, it's like one of the biggest curse you could possibly have in your life is, is having a bad wife. Uh, in this case, he's saying having a wife, finding a wife is, such a, is a good thing. But I, I think we're going to find out that, hey, it depends on the wife. You know. All right, brother, what do you say? Well, Brother Luke, I certainly can make a connection with this verse and the two previous verses and the following two verses. It's very clear to me that those who benefit uh, from the uh, gift of gab, just like the song that America put out uh, will have more likely obtain a wife and a good thing than someone who doesn't have the gift of gap. Okay, back to you, Brother Luke. Okay. Uh, all right, then. Um, I don't see how they're connected, but um, I, I, I see there's something to be learned by each one of these I, these ideas, uh, but the idea of whoever finds a wife finds a good thing, and the concept of having a wife, uh, I guess, is, is, is a good thing. I shouldn't say I guess. It is It is a good thing, and it's a great thing. I mean, I'm very, very happy with my wife. I've been so blessed. Uh, 36 years now we've been married, and... Um, uh, boy, the idea of not having her for my wife is just like uh, just, it's scary to me. I'd be, I'd be, I would be crushed. And uh, while we're on this subject here, I, I, I would just ask everybody to uh, uh, pray for. I haven't talked to him for probably six months or more now, but Brother Joe Byron uh, and his wife is Mary, and she's been very, very seriously ill, and. She may already be with the Lord. I don't know. Uh, but I've been praying for Joe and Mary for a long time now. And so uh, I, I, the reason I'm mentioning it is because uh, of all the people I've ever known, Brother Joe, is, is he loves his wife desperately, uh, he deeply. I can't think of any case, case where I've known any person where I... I saw there was more love for your spouse than Brother Joe has. So, uh, yeah, finding a wife, being the concept of being married and, uh, and uh, that relationship with your wife is so wonderful. Uh, I'm going to go to the next verse, verse 23. But for, Well, let me ask you if you want to respond to that. Um, my prayers are always for Brother Joseph and Sister Mary. I love them dearly. Uh, every time I think of them, I think of us all together, laying hands on them, anointing them with the holy anointing oil, and praying for them. According to the recipe given in scriptures, I pray that she has the best doctors and she has the best chances of coming through this and that we see them both soon again. Okay, back to you, Brother Luke. Okay. Um, 
Okay, I'm going to uh, now. Uh, uh, oh, I'm still on the KJV here. So, um, right, verse 23: The poor useth entreaties, but the rich answereth roughly. Uh, so, entreaty is to kind of plead for something. The poor are pleading with us for help. The rich answereth roughly. Well, and, Luke, yeah. Luke, that's referencing the previous verse. The poor man has to get on his knees and beg his wife to marry him. But the rich man, he always getting girls wanting to marry him. And when he finally decides to have one, he says, oh, okay, come on. Okay, there's the connection. All right. Yeah, I can see how you can connect that. Uh, and, and and I'm going to read the last verse 24 here. This is a uh, This is to me one of a really really meaningful verse to me. In KJV it says a man that hath friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. So two important ideas here. One is that, uh, I mean, I, I do know some people that uh, um, they don't have friends. And I've noticed that they don't seem to be making an effort to have friends. And I've often stated this. I don't know if I've stated it to the person there. Sometimes it, I don't feel it's always my place to teach everybody I come across in life, you know, and uh, <laughs> I, I have to have a particular kind of relationship with someone before I'm going to start talking about that and say, hey, the reason you don't have any friends is because you're not a friendly person, you know. But it is so true that uh, uh, if we are friendly, uh, that we're going to get friends back. To, back. Uh, I, I found that I'm, I'm kind of like, distressed to tell you that I've had, I can think of at least a half dozen friends I've had in my life. And it seems to be gone on my whole life that where someone who is a troubled person and has no friends at all, no one will even associate with them because there's something about them that is just unlikable. And they don't want to be around them. Maybe they have some kind of a quirky personality or, or, or abrasive personality. Abrasive is what I've, I'm thinking of in, the, in my cases where uh, I, I've known people that are abrasive and no one will associate with them. And for me, I've been friendly to them, been kind to them. And then what, because they have no friends and I show them friendliness, all of a sudden I've become their best friend. And some of these friendships have lasted for years and I'm sad to say that my other friends and even my family have suffered because the person is un really unworthy of friendship. I mean, that, and, and I think I've made a mistake in the past allowing that friendship to endure too long and, uh, and allowing my family and other friends to suffer because of a, a person with a who's mean-spirited, sarcastic, rude, or abrasive, and, that, and, and and I finally had to reach the point with each one of them. It took me a long time to learn this, but I finally had to cut them off. Uh, because, uh, you know, I was friendly, and they attached themselves to me, and but then they were hurting everybody else around me by their, their rude remarks and, and, and horrible, horrible uh, attitude. So, uh, you know, I don't know if you've had any experiences like that, but uh, I, in, on one way, yeah, we want to be friendly and we have more friends, but sometimes we attract really the worst kinds of friends, people who they're incorrigibles that no one wants to have anything to do with them. And yet, and yet they end up coming into my life and, and, and harming my other friends and family. I, 
I don't know, maybe I'm just venting too much about this, but I, have you ever had that kind of experience, brother? Uh, no, absolutely not, brother Luke. Because the Lone Ranger don't have no friends. Tonto is his only friend. Okay, back to you, Brother Luke. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, now, the second part of that verse is very dear to me, too. And that is that there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And... I don't know that uh, if the next chapter, let me look at the next chapter real quickly to see if the first verse has anything to do with this. No, it doesn't. Um, so uh, this verse seems to me that it um, it's not connected to the other verses. Uh, brother, I got to take this call from my wife. I'm gonna I'm gonna mute you for a second. Hello, Wyatt. How you doing, man? Good. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing well. Um, yeah, I just came to check out this hangout. So. That's great, Wyatt. Uh, very shortly, Brother Luke will be returning, and he will be uh, speaking to you about... Uh, the rules uh, okay. to uh, remain in this hangout. Okay, okay. Until then, we can go ahead and uh, chat between ourselves. Okay. Have you? So, uh, yeah, go ahead. Um, like I, I was just going to ask if you had any questions for me, but, <laughs> but I interrupted you when you were starting to ask him. So. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right, brothers. I'm I'm back. Uh, I had to take that call from my wife because she's back east, but her mother is near death, and I, I just I, I don't normally like to answer the phone when I'm in the middle of one of these broadcasts. But uh, so I had to take the call. Uh, but uh, we have someone new with us here, Wyatt, huh? Yeah. Hi, Wyatt. How are you doing? I, I'm Brother Luke, and I I'm assuming uh, you you read the. Uh, yeah. The channel rules, and you you adhere to all the the doctrines on there. Yeah, I adhere to all the doctrines on there, man. Okay, all right, and thank you, brother, for joining us. Um, did you hear anything we've discussed up to this point regarding uh, the study on proverbs? Uh, no, I haven't actually. Um, okay. Um, all right. Well, let me get my Bible here. Uh, yeah. We're just go ahead, brother. We're at the very end of chapter 18 now, and we just discussed the very last verse, and I think it's an idea that is um, uh, that you could talk about just without, without even the context of the others. Uh, so let me uh, let me read it to you and get your reaction to it. Uh, it says, "A man that hath friends must show himself friendly, and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother." Uh, what is your response to a reaction to that verse. What we're doing here is that, uh, I don't know, I don't recall you uh, joining my, my uh, broadcast before, but the way we're doing this simply is we're reading these verses and just exchanging ideas. Uh, none of us claim to have an absolute understanding of every verse, so we're just kicking it around trying to understand the verses together and expounding on them. So uh, I'd ask you to just participate in that and and the verse we've got here is verse 28, chapter 18. And again, I'll read it. A man that hath friends must show himself friendly, and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Well, um, I think that that's uh, I think that's uh, I believe that's uh, uh, Christ Jesus, actually. Got any uh, thoughts on that? Um. Yeah, I'd say that uh, the second part of that verse, uh, that that is uh, re reference to Jesus. At least I know that uh, my personally, and many people I've known over the years, we've used that verse uh, to cite 
Jesus, the faithfulness that Jesus has tor towards us. Um, uh, you know, there's a lot of verses that Jesus talked about friendship. He says, he says there is uh, no greater friend than someone willing to give their life, no greater love than someone willing, willing to give their life for a friend. And Jesus also said that uh, no longer do I call you, call you uh, something, but now I, I call you friends. And so Jesus talked about friendship, and we know that he is faithful. There's a verse that says that uh, even when we have no faith, he remains faithful because he cannot deny himself. So he is a faithful friend. And I think this verse here is alluding. It's not, it's not uh, explicit, but it's alluding to, to Jesus himself. Uh, go ahead, and if anything you want to say about that, and then I'll ask Brother Eric to talk about it. No, I think you covered it quite well. All right, Brother Eric, uh, what, do you, what do you have to say about that? Uh, well, I'm in agreement 100% with uh, both of you all. Uh, that's very good. Uh, absolutely, that's a reference to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay, back to you guys. <laughs> all right, I'm going to look at it uh, as is my custom here. Uh, look at it in the... First in the KJV, and then I like to look at the Amplified. Sometimes I find it helpful. I'm a KJV firstist, not a KJV onlyist. Well, that's where we would disagree. I'm a King James onlyist. Yeah, well, that's fine with me. I uh, I was a KJV onlyist for 25 years, uh, so uh, that's perfectly okay with me. Um, and in the Amplified, I look at the Amplified as as as, as like. Let's let's say that the person that wrote the Amplified, uh, let's say that his name is uh, John Doe. Uh, by me looking at the Amplified right now, it's like having Brother Wyatt, Brother Eric, and Brother John Doe here in the conversation. Uh, that's how I see it. It's like inviting someone else to join the. How do you see it, Brother John Doe? Well, in the he says in the I wrote the Amplified, and the way I see it is like this. The man of too many friends, chosen indiscriminately, will be broken in pieces and come to ruin. But there is a true loving friend who is reliable and stick closer than a brother. So that's how the Amplified uh, translates this. And the word Amplified is uh, explains how they've taken uh, on the task of, of uh, interpreting this. Is they amplify. Uh, that's, isn't, isn't that what we are doing uh, right at our as we discuss these verses? We're amplifying it. We read the verse and we expound or amplify or give our own comments, our own interpretation of what that verse means to us. Um, so what is your, uh, how do you see it based upon that information? Uh, um. <laughs> Well, like you said, we're supposed to amplify. Uh, I don't know how many uh, how many uh, people are actually listening to this outside uh, outside the Google Hangout, or how many people will watch this in the future. But I think our voice will be amplified more than uh, uh, more. Yeah, I, that's certainly our hope, isn't it? I mean, we're doing this. I do these broadcasts really for two reasons. Uh, one is hopefully to edify the audience that watches the videos, and the other is for our, my own enlightening enlightenment uh, to learn as we discuss it and the fellowship with other believers. So, um, yeah, it, it is our hope that uh, you know uh, it will, this will be amplified as as people uh, uh, watch the videos in the future. Uh, Brother Eric, now, one thing I noticed on this Amplified is it seems to kind of express the point that I was kind of complaining about uh, earlier and that my experiences with being too friendly. Um, uh, you, yeah, we want to be friendly uh, and you're not going to make new friends if you're not a friendly person, but what I found is that because I was willing to be friendly to even people who were kind of incorrigible, it's come back to bite me, as I explained how I explained it earlier. And, and the Amplified says that says basically the same kind of thing I was complaining about. It says, 
the man of too many friends chosen indiscriminately will be broken in pieces and come to ruin. Uh, and so that kind of <laughs> encapsulates the the complaint that I, I said earlier, brother Eric. Well, brother Luke, uh, your experience is valid and should be well heeded. Well, to be honest with you, I don't know how they got that out of what was written in the King James, and this possibly makes a good case for why it's King James only stands. Okay, back to you. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, well, there's an awful lot of arguments uh, on that side uh, to stick with the key KJV. To, and as I said, I, I, my policy is I want to read the King James first, and I test everything against the King James. Uh, but uh, I do think that it's it would be it, it's helpful for me. And it, to me, I, I don't like to, to to brag about my education, but I'm a, I'm a highly educated person, and I do have a good vocabulary. And even with me, and with my education level, I find the King James sometimes perplexing, and I find it helpful to look at another translation or commentaries. And isn't that what I'm doing right now with uh, Brother Wyatt, and Brother uh, Brother Eric, right now? Uh, I'm looking for your interpretations on these things. Even the KJV, I want you to explain it to me. So I'm I'm relying on that too for information. And hey, Veckel. Hi, we have uh, Veckel here join us. Hello. Okay. Uh, um, I'm, the, I'm just about at the point where I'm going to close the broadcast here. I'm, I'm, I'm doing these broadcasts daily now rather than twice a week. So rather than doing them for two hours, I'm, I'm trying to stick to a one-hour limit. So... Uh, I guess what I'm going to do now is, uh, um, Veckel, hi. Uh, want to introduce yourself to us? I know I've seen you in other Hangouts. All right, uh, I'm going to end the I'm going to end the broadcast here as far as the study of Proverbs, the concluding the chapter uh, 18. Now we'll pick up with verse. Uh, I mean. Uh, Chapter 19 uh, next next Wednesday, uh, but the, I end every broadcast with an invitation for salvation. So uh, let me make it as concise as I possibly can. If you're watching this now and you're learning about proverbs and learning how to be wise in your life, the most wise thing you you can ever do is what uh, the Apostle Paul said to Timothy in his book. Uh, wisdom unto salvation. Um, it would be a shame to gain all the wisdom in the world and never again that one wisdom that, that counts for more, everything else, more than everything else, and that is, do you want to go to heaven after you die? And if you do want to go to heaven after you die, then do you know what it is required of you? Uh, most people think that in order to go to heaven, they, they have to work at it. They have to attain it through their own efforts. And if they're a good enough person, they work hard enough and become religious enough, somehow they'll satisfy God and he'll accept them into heaven. But, but according to Romans 10:3, it, it says that's not God's way. God's way is not through personal merit. God's way is through Jesus Christ, except that we are not worthy and that we need Jesus Christ to be our Savior. So I would say that... Uh, if you're trying to get through heaven through your own efforts, you need to you need to repent of that and say, I can't do it. I need to instead rely on Jesus Christ. And I basically want I just want you to know who he is. He is God manifest in the flesh. He says he came down to heaven from heaven and he became a man so that he could give his life as a ransom for us. He died on the cross and he paid for our sins. So uh, the sin issue between man and God has already been resolved. Jesus paid for all of our sins. Now the question is, uh, do you want to receive the gift of eternal life from Jesus Christ? Or do you want to struggle and try to get to heaven some other way? When Jesus said there is no other way. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. You can't get to heaven any other way. No man cometh to the Father except through me. So... What are you going to do with that verse there? Are you going to say Jesus lied? There is another way. 
Are you going to say Jesus was an insane person who didn't know what he was talking about? Or are you going to say it's true? Jesus is told us the truth that he's the only way to get into heaven. And if you accept that truth, then all you need to do now is say, Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died for my sins, and I trust you because you raised yourself from the dead. So that proves to me you do have the power over life and death. And I'm putting my future in your hands. I'm trusting you to get me to heaven. And if you do that, if you put your, your future in his hands, saying I'm trusting you instead of trying to get there on my own, at that very instant, he gives you eternal life as a free gift. Now, that's the, uh, the message of salvation, and I hope you'll heed it. I hope you'll trust him. Uh, I'm going to let uh, Brother Wyatt and Brother Eric make a final remark here, and then we'll end the broadcast for today. Brother Wyatt? Well, you kind of took the words right out of my mouth, man. But, um, yeah, let me, well, uh, yeah, let me uh, reiterate something. The wisest thing you can possibly do is accept Jesus Christ uh, as your Lord and Savior. Um, God said that we're all sinners. We've all broken God's rules, and we've all done wicked things. So there's a punishment for that, and that punishment uh, is uh, called death. Death and everlasting hellfire, uh, the Bible says. So... And uh, the, but Jesus died, so we can actually go live with Him in heaven instead of uh, go down, uh, go down to hell. You know, uh, so so basically, you got two options: you got uh, Jesus Christ or you got hell. I mean, uh, people might say, "Well, well, you're you're narrow-minded on this." Well, God's narrow-minded, so I must be too. So that's what the Bible says. Um, so, uh, so basically, um, just, I mean, what are you waiting on? Just accept Jesus Christ as Lord. Uh, that's great, Brother White, and that's great, Brother Luke. I agree with both of you guys, uh, and, uh, I would also like to, uh, tell people that uh, the same thing that Brother Luke said and the same thing that Brother Wyatt said that Jesus Christ is the only way okay back to you guys alright I want to thank uh, both of you for, for joining this discussion today um, Brother Wyatt maybe next time you can join a little bit earlier if, if your schedule <laughs> permits it uh, we, I, I try to do these broadcasts um, daily, uh, 1 p.m. Pacific time that they begin, and they'll go for an hour. Um, tomorrow I won't be here. I'm, I'm, I do the, I'm going to try to do them uh, every day possible, but tomorrow I'm going to take a day off and go golfing. So uh, join me every day that's possible, and uh, I'll close the live broadcast, and then I'll visit with you guys privately before we, we close. Uh, bless you all in the name of our great Savior God. His name is Jesus Christ. <laughs>